episode of the Assembly Lines podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. And today we'll be looking at how to program a simple Apple interface card uh, using the Merlin 8 full screen editor. So first thing to do is I want to describe the card to you and then we'll go ahead and use the Merlin 8 editor. So let's get started. Okay, so here's my Apple II uh, prototype card. My actual um, circuit that I'm uh, using is uh, based around a 6522A chip, um, and this is the versatile interface adapter chip. And you can make this uh, chip do things like it has a, uh, a timer on it, um, a shift register, and you can control whether the A and B ports are inputs or outputs, um, hence the name versatile. And tying all this together, there's two other chips. So there's a uh, 74LS74 dual flip-flop, and this just uh, this is needed to delay the uh, 6502 clock signal. So here's the clock coming in from the 6502, um, and it just delays that clock signal uh, to meet the uh, the timing requirements of the 6522. And then the only other chip is the uh, it's a 74LS245, uh, which is an octal bus transceiver, and this just uh, allows asynchronous uh, communication uh, between the 6502 data bus and the 6522 data bus. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this card into the Apple II and then just write a very simple assembly language routine uh, just to simulate a clock. On. Okay, so now I have my interface card plugged into slot 2 in the Apple and we're ready to start programming. So I'm going to be using the Merlin 8 assembler, and this is the one that comes with the full screen editor. You need a um, 128K Apple IIe or a 2C or a 2GS to be able to use Merlin 8. Uh, this is the DOS 3.3 version. There's also a ProDOS version. And here's the Merlin manual. Uh, this contains all of the instructions for using the assembler as well as all the uh, commands for the full screen editor. Um, if you don't have a copy of the manual, you can get a copy online, and I'll try and post that in the show notes. Um, if you have a copy of my Assembly Lines book, uh, at the very back of it, uh, there's a quick reference, and that also has a summary of the uh, most of the important commands for the uh, full screen editor. Okay, so here we are in uh, Merlin 8, and let's start a new program. So we'll hit E to get into the editor. And once we're here, uh, we're just going to hit A to actually start uh, adding new code. And you can see this is now quite a bit different than the uh, single line editor. So now I have the full screen to play with. Uh, I can move around. I can move up and down. Um, and pretty much anywhere I move, that's where I'm actually going to end up typing. So let's just start our program, and we'll start with some comments. Um, so to do this, I'll hit Open Apple 8 to get a row of asterisks and then I'll hit open Apple 9 uh, to get a nice little box and we can type in there and we'll just start typing let's say 6522 uh, versatile interface adapter experiment number 5 um, and you can see it actually shoved that asterisk on the right all the way over so I can hit control D uh, to bring that back in, delete all the characters. Um, looks like I have a little bit too much space, so I'll go back over here to the left and hit, uh, I'll just actually just start typing some spaces uh, because I'm in insert mode. So you can see that the cursor is blinking with a little eye, and that means I'm in insert mode. So if I just start typing now, ABCD, uh, you can see it actually just shoved everything over. Instead, what I could have done is, let me delete these, if I hit the tab key, it'll change from insert mode to uh, overstrike mode. And so now, if I type something, it'll actually overstrike or uh, write over what's underneath it. Um, so obviously I want to fix that. Okay, um, hit return, open Apple 8, um, whoops, and actually I wanted to insert a new line in between those, I forgot. So I'm going to hit open Apple I for insert, okay, and then I'll hit open Apple uh, 9 to get a nice little box, and this is experiment number 5 
from Jeff Tranter's blog. Okay, so with the full screen editor, there's two types of commands. There's control commands and open Apple commands. And they pretty much uh, work the same way. So for example, if I hit control B, I go to the beginning of the line. Control N takes me to the end. Um, if I actually hit open Apple B, I go to the beginning of the program and open Apple N takes me to the end of the program. And same thing with uh, deleting characters versus deleting lines. So if I just type in some characters, X, Y, Z, um, I can go up. If I hit Control D, you can see it deleted one character. If I hit open Apple D, it deletes the entire line. So control characters operate in a single character and the open Apple commands operate on the entire line. Okay, so let's just keep going with our program. So we're just going to type in some labels right now. And I'm not going to go over the entire program because the purpose here is not to actually explain what the program does, but just sh to show you how the editor actually works. Let's list the code and make sure everything looks good. And then once we've listed it, let's actually assemble it and see if it assembles okay. Um, so now we told it to assemble at starting at location 6000. Um, so what we could do is we could actually uh, go ahead and get the code um, and try to run it. The only problem is we're actually using uh, HTAB and VTAB, which are not going to work properly for uh, 80 column mode. So instead what we'll do is we'll quit out of the editor. So I'll hit Q. Okay, so now we're back at the main menu. And we'll go ahead and save our source. Um, and we'll call it A6522 clock. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and save the uh, compiled object code. So I'll hit O. And it actually saved the source with a, a dot S suffix, so there won't be any conflict with the object code. Um, so now let's quit and let's try and run our clock program 522 clock the B run okay and this should load it up at 6000 and run it um, and you can see at the top let me clear the uh, screen here so we can see what's going on um, so you can see that I can actually still do commands and the um, interrupt handler, every second it's interrupting and printing out the next time. So now let's uh, interrupt it. I'll hit, just hit reset and we'll go back into the assembler and make some changes. So if we're lucky, our code is still in memory, which it looks like it is. And I'm just going to go into the editor. Okay, so if you noticed before, uh, let me hit control down arrow to, wait, what is it, open apple down arrow to jump down. Um, we had our code to print out the hours, minutes, and seconds. And that was this block from here down to about here. And it'd be nice if this is actually in a, a separate subroutine. Uh, so what I want to do is move this to the very end of the program. And to do that, I'll hit open apple X to start to cut and then I'll just start moving my down arrow down. You can see it's highlighting all the lines there. Okay, and when I get to the end, I'll just hit Open Apple X again to cut it to the clipboard. And then I'll just go down to the end of the program. And right here, I can actually hit Open Apple V to paste. And amazingly, it actually is a V, just like uh, modern programs. Okay, so now here's our print routine, and let's just give it a name. We'll call it, um, I'm going to hit Control i to get an overstrike mode, uh, PR time. Okay, and then finally at the end, instead of being, uh, doing a jump, or sorry, a JSR to PR byte, um, I'll make it a jump. And so when we jump to PR byte, when it does the RTS, it'll actually return from our own subroutine. Um, which is just a little trick to uh, save yourself uh, just one byte code. Um, but now we actually deleted that code, so now we have to go back up here and print out our time. 
So if we go up here, where was that? Right here. Um, so we want to do JSR, ER time, hit return. Okay, and that should uh, do it. So command Q to quit, and let's assemble our code and make sure it's still good. And everything looks fine there. Q to quit and go back to the uh, main menu. Let's save our source by hitting S. Let's save our object code by hitting O. And once that's done, we will quit out and try our program again. So B run A6522 block. Uh, wait, I forgot to switch to uh, 40 column mode. Uh, looks terrible. Um, let's stop it. And let's try and run that again. So uh, let's just get fancy. We'll go into the monitor and then just type 6000G. Okay, and there is our program still running like before. Um, so we showed how to use the full screen editor in Merlin 8. Uh, there's a lot more commands available with the uh, full screen editor. Um, I would recommend getting a copy of the manual, say a PDF. Um, and looking through the, uh, the list of commands. Um, you can do a lot of things with like search and replace. And I think that's all for today. So thanks for watching.